Shout out to the gays. Hi, I'm Fiona Bichon. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we have Benji with us again. Benji, go lay down. He's looking at me like, what are we doing? Why aren't we playing? It is Pride Month. If you guys weren't aware, I'm hoping most people are aware. Today we have a very special episode. I'm going to be recommending some queer witchcraft authors, queer witchcraft books, queer witchcraft decks, dot bod, podcasts, dogcasts, podcasts that I think you should support in honor of Pride Month. This is gonna be separated into sections. We're gonna start off with some queer witchcraft books. This is books on queer witchcraft. I also picked up some theory books because why not? As well as that, I have my, a big old list, a big old list of queer witchcraft authors and then podcasts. So just to kind of start off with a few things, if you are not aware, I identify as queer, I am gender fluid, I use they, them pronouns, as well as that my sexuality is not straight, um, which it's either bisexual or pansexual, I don't know which one. And yeah, I have openly identified as not straight since I was 16 and came out as gender fluid gender fluid in like 2020, 2020, 2021. Um, and exclusively started using they, them pronouns in 2021, I think. I lose track of time. A few disclaimers before we get started. So this is a very long list <laughs> of people. Just to be completely clear, I have either, this person is either openly queer online or in like writing or I went to the person directly and asked them if they were comfortable in being included in this video and if they identify as queer. So if you hear me list something and you're like, um, that person's not queer, think again. I talked to them. <laughs> so even if you aren't aware that someone in the podcast is queer, now you know, and you can support them because it's a queer podcast. We got a big old list. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven authors. I don't have all of their books. It's also very uh, quickly. We'll say this. Um, I could not get any everyone in this video. I chose to um, center queer people of color, gender queer, gender non-conforming individuals, trans individuals, and queer women. I made that choice of my own volition because I think that queer people of color obviously being the most underrepresented as well as trans individuals, trans men, trans women, non-binary writers, it very often feels as though, oh and queer women, excuse me, very often feels as though there's a lack of recognition for these authors, at least from my standpoint and in my experience. So if you have a perfectly, like a completely different experience, that's valid, I'm not gonna tell you. No, excuse me, I'm yawning a lot today. I was, we're gonna start off with like the queer witchcraft books that I picked up. I picked up a total of five books, five. And I have three that I am recommending today, plus an anthology, and I will mention a couple that I did not get a chance to pick up. We got a stack. It's a little stack, but it's a stack nonetheless. Um, starting off, this by far is my favorite book that I read this month. It is Queering Your Craft, Witchcraft from the Margins by Cassandra Snow, who also wrote Queering the Tarot. As you can tell, very happy with this one. Um, I love this book. I think that it's probably one of my go-to recommendations. I have, I hope notes, because I did write notes for each. I did not. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the high and low points of each book. I think there was only one section in this entire book that I have criticism for, which is pretty great, honestly. Like, cause if I, I, dis I don't disagree, but I think that I am, pretty critical of my books. So it's a good book. <laughs> um, this was the first book that I read that really made me feel kind of seen as a queer person who also has a chronic illness. I was really happy with it. It isn't just white, able-bodied, skinny queer people that are discussed in this. Cassandra takes their time to go out of their way to 
say queer fat people, queer disabled people, queer people of color, don't forget about these queer people. And that to me means a lot because a lot of the other books on queer magic and queer witchcraft that I read didn't really do that. Or if they, they did it in a way that felt very close to eh, like very towing the line between someone could interpret that in a really bad way and also I feel like you aren't doing this well and aren't including everyone. So I really wanted to highlight this book with my only criticism, that's it. I think that it does an amazing job of giving you a lot of different options on how to work your magic, including talking about a lot of witchcraft before we even get into the deity section, which I love. There's a, a whole queer grimoire, which is like half of the book. So I love the queer grimoire. I love how much care Cassandra takes when approaching every topic, how hard they work to include everyone. And that's why my criticism is even like, that's more of a personal thing. That's my personal thing based on my experiences. Like to be completely frank, Cassandra does their due diligence with this book. And I love that. It isn't just, you know, a like, like I read a book recently that was like, said something pretty pro like kind of problematic and then was like, but also cultural appropriation is bad. And I was like, okay, but when you don't start with that, it feels like you're using that to try and make up for what you just said. But that's just me. That's just me. And I'm aware that not everyone is gonna, not everyone is gonna feel the same way. And that's all right. I love this. It has so much good information. It's definitely a book that a beginner could pick up. Um, it talks about moon magic, sabbats, ritual, circle, um, the elements. And I think that because what makes it stand out for me is that it's not just a beginner book. It's a beginner book that includes so much and includes queer people and not only includes them, but makes them the focal point, which I love <clears throat> 10 out of 10. Next. So this is not a queer witchcraft book. This is a queer theology book and I'm only about halfway, not even, I'm about like 50 pages in. Uh, and that is Bad Theology Kills, Undoing Toxic Beliefs and Reclaiming Your Spiritual Authority by Kevin Miguel, Miguel Garcia. They did an amazing, they did an amazing uh, job with this. I'll read the back for you. Bad theology nearly took Kevin's life. For as long as they can remember, they heard that being queer was a choice, that it was a sin, and that if they ever chose this alternative lifestyle, Kevin would be in danger of the fires of hell for all eternity. For over 12 years, they wrestled with their body, resisting the natural flow of their body until it came to a breaking point that drove Kevin to attempt to end it all. Until a thought entered Kevin's mind. What if I'm wrong? What if God's okay with this? What if God really is love? Through personal testimony, classical theolo theological devices, and plenty of profanity and sarcasm, Kevin guides you through the theologies and ideas that are currently killing our communities. This book is your first step in undoing the toxic beliefs of your past, reclaiming your spiritual authority, and finally creating a life and spiritual practice that is filled with wonder and connection. I love this book. Um, I would definitely recommend it if you are looking to deal with religious trauma or some of that, but I think that even those who have no experience in the Catholic or Christian church have no experience within these bad theologies are still affected by bad theology. And that is why everyone should read this book. Like I said, I'm only halfway through. I can't give you a full review, but I would say give it a good nine out of 10 so far. I, like I said, about 50 pages in, and I require every single book that I read, even if I do not finish it, to be 50 pages. I read 50 pages and then I decide whether or not to finish it or not. This other book is one that I haven't started yet. Actually, maybe I'm, in, I'm like on page three. And this is a 1978 Witchcraft and the Gay Counterculture by Arthur Evans. This book was so expensive. Give your guess on into how expensive it was in the comments. Um, on the back, the price is listed as $5.95. Anyways, um, by Fagrag Books, nice. It it talks about gay counterculture in witchcraft theology. So I think it's really, I think it'll be really interesting. From what I heard from reviews and from friends who had read it, read it, it's definitely a product of its time. So it's a 1970 book. All right. So keep that in mind. Um, but I do think that it will be a really interesting read, especially since it's one of the 
books that came up immediately when I was like, witchcraft and magic. They were like, this one. Um, and the cover is sexy. It has, so far, really cool illustrations. A picture of Diana at the front. A radical view of Western civilization and some of the people it has tried to destroy. So because it's 1978, the last time I read a 1970s book, like not necessarily theology, but history with a little theology in there, the book itself was like revolutionary for 1978. And I was, I was reading it, I was like, I am already aware of all of this. This is pretty well known now. So keep that in mind. Um, because of it being a product of its time, it may be a little outdated. Keep that in mind as you're going into it because I, I can't give you a review. I haven't started it yet. These are just the books I picked up. Moving on, there were a few, there was another book that I picked up. It is called Arcane Perfection. It is an anthology of queer, trans, intersex witches. Um, it is more poetry and prose than it is witchcraft, but it is like, you can get, I'll put the link to get it below. You can pay whatever you want and it's 500 pages of glorious work. So if you're interested in that, I'm very much enjoying getting through it. I love some good queer poetry. The other book that I, someone recommended I picked up was The Horned God of the Witches by Jason Menke, which I had out. And now I don't know where it is. So I haven't read that one yet. I didn't have time because I decided that I was gonna do this about two weeks ago. So it's kind of like amazing that I've read now, I think I've read like five books in the past two weeks, maybe more. The last one that I was gonna pick up was Becoming Dangerous. Um, which is another anthology. A lot of the queer witchcraft books are anthologies. There are more, you know, there are more authors who are queer that don't write about queer witchcraft than there are queer witchcraft books, and that's okay. Just because someone doesn't write about queer witchcraft doesn't mean they're not queer. So this is my list of queer witchcraft authors. We're getting into the author section. Like I said in the beginning, these are people who are either publicly out as queer, I'm using queer as an umbrella term for um, all of the LGBTQ plus community, QIA. And then, or I got personal confirmation from them that they are queer or identify as queer, for example, gay, lesbian, trans, etc. So we're starting off with J. Allen Cross. J. Allen Cross, he wrote American Bujeria and he has a new book coming out, which I didn't grab the title yesterday and I should have. Hold on. So it is The Witch's Guide to the Paranormal, How to Investigate, Communicate, and Clear Spirits, which I love that. I'm reading Consorting with Spirits by Jason Miller right now and I would love another companion guide to like spirit work. And so I am really excited. It is a complete 180 from his last book and that's okay. It is coming out September 8th, 2022. So it is available for pre-order now, 10 out of 10. Love it. As well as this, Amy Blackthorn is a uh, queer woman who writes books such as Blackthorn's Botanical Magic, Blackthorn's Protection Magic, Blackthorn's like, it, like so many books. Um, and Black, Amy Blackthorn is like a pillar in our community. I love her very dearly. Um, we had her on our podcast for an episode talking about herbalism, herbal magic, green magic, etc. And Amy Blackthorn's new book was Protection Magic. I believe there was, and she also has a shop. She has a shop. Next up, Cassandra Snow, we already went over their books, Queering the Tarot, Queering Your Craft. I believe Cassandra Snow has more books, but I'm not 100% sure. I think they have a new book coming out. Lessons from the Empress, a tarot workbook, is coming out in 2022. Hell yeah. They also have a blog. Um, her pronouns are they, them, and she, her. But Cassandra Snow, we already talked about. Juliet Diaz is another amazing queer author. She has written Holy fuck. Um, the Altar Within, Witchery, and Plant Witchery. I believe that I featured uh, Juliet Diaz in the past as a author that I love. We have also had her on the podcast. <laughs> so, books and broomsticks, the place to be. Furthermore, Lilith Dorsey wrote Water Magic, and one other book, 
Lilith Dorsey wrote Water Magic, Orisha's Goddesses and Voodoo Queens, Voodoo and Afro-Caribbean Paganism, Love Magic. So, so many books. They are so amazing. They are openly black and queer and I love them. I think they're a great author. Also, I will, will say this right now. I definitely have most of these authors' books on my shelf. I just didn't feel like pulling them out. Call me lazy. Call me stupid. Love Lilith Dorsey, Mara Starling, she's a new author. She has written Welsh Witchcraft. You can find her on TikTok, you can find her on Twitter, you can find her on Instagram. Um, her book is available now, I believe. Our books came out similar times. And she's amazing. She was also on a show, a Welsh show recently, and posted a clip of it on TikTok, and I was telling my mom about it because I was so happy. Um, Lauren Leo is a, another individual who is a queer author. Lauren Leo has written Horse Magic. I have talked about that in the past. Erin Oberyn. Erin Oberyn is author of, I believe it's Southern Cunning. Southern Cunning Folkloric Witchcraft in the American South. They are a Southern folk witch with a passion for bringing witchcraft to people from different roots. Erin writes about queer magic. Ah! By regionalism and witchcraft that gets down in the dirt. Their pronouns are they, them. How did I miss Mortellus? Mortellus is another author who is non-binary. Mortellus has written, I believe the book is Do I Have to Wear Black? Do I Have to Wear Black by Mortellus? Talk, they talk a lot about death and funeral rites. Um, and you can find them at A Crow and the Dead on Instagram. They are witch, necromancer, mortician. More books include The Bones Fall in a Spiral. I did definitely see uh, do I have to wear black a lot? I thought that it was really cool. They also have some blog posts, it looks like, under their Amazon page. Love that. But I think they're very cool. Now we're moving on to decks. There are three decks that I found that were definitely created either to center queer representation, created by queer individuals, especially queer people of color, or are just called queer. I have seen two of these. I think the third one I have looked at, but I mean, even then, the representation is something I'm all I'm a fan for. I love seeing, I love seeing queer love on the tarot decks. All right, so the first one is the Star Spinner deck. Um, it is by Trungles, which is very cool. I do not know what pronouns they use, so I'm just gonna call them Trungles. But Trungles, really cool. Uh, the Star Spinner tarot features a lot of queer representation. There also is the Queer Tarot which <laughs> created by two queer individuals, very cool. I want to buy it because it seems really, and it's really pretty. And then the This Might Hurt Tarot, which is mentioned as queer, but I'm not sure. I also recently pledged to a Kickstarter of a houseplant oracle deck created by a queer person, which I may include. Um, I think the Kickstarter is done, but I am like very excited for a houseplant oracle. So not a lot of tarot decks. So what, the process of researching this was looking up queer witchcraft books and then milling through a bunch of results. And then for decks looking up queer tarot decks and milling through a bunch of results. And if I couldn't find a definite answer on whether or not there was like queer representation or it was created by a queer person, I had to, I excluded it. Which sucks because I'm sure I missed so many tarot decks that were are amazing and created by queer people. But it also is one of those things where like, I'm not on talking terms with a lot of tarot deck creators. There's definitely more. I just have to find it. I think, hold on. Is Tarot of the Divine created by a queer person? Tarot of the Divine is another queer deck. I know, see, okay, here's the thing. I have Tarot of the Divine. I know it's queer, but I'm like, is it queer? on accident, and I know that sounds so fucking dumb, but yeah, Terror of the Divine is another queer deck that I personally love. It is very queer. There are a lot of queer couples in it. I think they literally have a video called The Seven Gayest Things in My Store. <laughs> How did I not know this? I can't tell. All right, I'm a little, my gay art is like not great, um, but Terror of the Divine is another one. I have Terror of the Divine over there. I love it, it's one of my favorite decks, definitely get that. And once again, there are definitely more queer tarot decks made by queer people that I am missing. All right, so if you know one, please. 
drop it in the comments. But moving on to podcasts. So once again, the easiest part of this was the authors and the podcasts because if I wasn't aware or the podcast was an openly like, yeah, we're a queer podcast. I just message them and I'm like, hey, do you identify as queer? If so do you want to be included in this? And they'd either be like, oh no, sorry. Or they'd be like, yeah, most of them said, yeah, because I already had an inkling that they were queer. Anyways, um, podcast section, queer podcast. The first one we're starting with is Southern Bramble. It is run by Witch of the Southern Light and Bane X Bramble, aka Austin. Both of them were on our podcast recently for an episode coming out this week on queer witchcraft. I love Southern Bramble. It is a podcast of crooked ways and it is about traditional witchcraft as well as just good time. I love them. Invoking Witchcraft is another one of my favorite queer podcasts. This is run by Archaea Honey, Britton, and J. Allen Cross. So I did mention J. Allen Cross slash Oregon Wood Witch earlier. Invoking Witchcraft is just like, I believe it's a folk magic podcast, but either way, very fun. I love it. Moving on, the Red Text Podcast. Two of my favorite people run this podcast. It is about folk Catholicism. That is the Mestizo Mix Mystic and Witch, Witch Illumicente. Queer folk Christian magical goth queer. I love them so much. They are both queer people of color and it is a, cro a podcast at the crossroads of the holy and heretical for an unholy communion. I love it. They talk about a lot of different things like Mexican sorcery, sigil magic, hoodoo, gnosticism, and they will bring people on to talk about it. Animism was on here. Um, They're just like so cool together and so cool separately. So definitely listen to the Red Text podcast, especially if you're interested in like holy ex heretical, that crossroad, which happens a lot in folk magic. Definitely listen to them. Next up is Jew Witches. Uh, shout out Jew Witches. I did do that in a video recently, which I did that. Jew Witches is run by Zoe. Zoe is a queer Jewish creator. Um, Jew Witches is a podcast. Zoe has another podcast called the I-10 Book Club, which I am a big fan of. I love that podcast as well. That's if you're into like books, like books, like fantasy fiction, etc. not witchy books. As well as this Jew Witches has a store. I love their veils. I get them all the time, 10 out of 10. Um, as well as that they just opened their apothecary section. Jew Witches, amazing podcast. Moving on, we have Roma Unraveled, which is a very queer podcast. It also talks about Romani rights and what is happening in, to Roma across a lot of different state lines. They are amazing. We had them on Books and Broomsticks a couple months ago and it was fantastic to talk to them. It is run by Of Batten Bones and Calls from the Void Apothecary or Christina. Um, they're great. I will listen to them all day. Next up is Folkcraft. This is the podcast of Aaron Oberon, who was mentioned in my author section, and Temperance Alden. Folk magic podcast, a lot of really interesting episodes. I don't believe they're on a schedule. They kind of release whenever, but I really like listening to them talk. Up next is Coffee and Cauld Coffee and Cauldron. I was on their podcast recently. I love both of these creators. It is run by Robin Valentine and Maria the Arcane. I don't know if you follow either of them, but Maria the Arcane is like, aesthetically pleasing to the max. And Robin Valentine wrote Magical Tarot and also provides tarot readings. Moving on, Hex Files podcast. These last three I discovered recently and through Twitter, through Mortalis actually, because I was like, I love Mortalis. Mortalis was like, I'm gonna spread the love. And I was like, oh shit, more queer people. So Hex Files podcast. This is not one that I've listened to, but I will give you a synopsis from Spotify. Hex Files is Josh and Tamara, paranormal researchers and explorers investigating the unknown odd and high strangeness all, all around us. Combining technology with occult and spiritual methods, spoiler alert, it's witchcraft. <laughs> we search for cryptids, ghosts, UFOs, aliens, hauntings, and usually a strong drink. Join us as we share our adventures, just bring your own bourbon. It is both history and comedy. There looks like there's about 20 episodes. I think it looks great. I'm gonna be listening to Hex Files. The other one is Two Witches, which is a podcast. The Two Witches podcast is we do what we want and we like that. Two formerly Catholic witches take bite-sized looks into the paranormal synchronicities, symbols, and 
lore. Talking to the dead with the crow and the dead, so Mortalis was on this podcast. Talking about problems in the paranormal, terror symbolism. It's very cool. They have a lot of different ones. It looks like they also have similar amount of episodes, 24. And the last one that I found recently was The Eternal Void, but with jazz. Um, it was run by my friend. I do, I did know that she had a podcast. I would listen to, I mean, it's a philosophy podcast, but it's literally called The Eternal Void, but with jazz. <laughs> Um, by Voidberg Productions, conversations on mysterious art, science, and music with a focus on the surreal and otherworldly. A very cool. Mortalis is on here. Uh, Shell, who I love, I love Shell. Percy on Cerberus or Three Head Scritches for a Good Boy. <laughs> Author Leah Spenson says, Yes, Loki did it. This is so, like, I love these. These are so fun. Uh, I love Shell. Shell's amazing. So definitely check these out. I will do my best to give a full list. I may not get links for all of them, but I they will pop up when you research them. Um, overall, I think this was like a 30 minute episode. I think if you're interested in more queer witchcraft recommendations, more book recs, etc., cetera, um, let me know. And yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. If I miss someone, a tarot deck, an author, um, a podcast, please let me know in the comments or drop them. I know I definitely, that's the thing, I definitely miss people because there are so many queer people, so many queer people in the community. I did choose to focus specifically on primarily queer women. I, I talked about this already. I don't need to explain it again. But yeah, that's all I have for you guys. If you want, you can subscribe, like, turn the bell on, but no pressure. Leave me a comment if you want to see more videos like this or what kind of content you want to see from me in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Sabendika.